Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I have a video for you guys all about the DAT. This is a video that I've gotten asked to do a lot of times and because I took the DATs a long time ago, I was waiting to come home in order to do this video with my sister. Hi, my name is Sarah. I go to UCSF School of Dentistry. I'm a third year. So she took the DAT um, a couple of years ago and I took the DAT um, just a little bit before her. Um, so, you years. know, yeah, a few years. Uh, so, you know, she has her information is a little bit more updated. Uh, but interestingly enough, we still ended up using a lot of similar resources. I think she used one or two other resources that I did not use. And so um, the resources that we recommend are kind of like, my recommendation and her recommendation combined to give you kind of the best tools that you could use on this exam. Um, and you know, the thing about the DAT is that unfortunately it's a scored exam. So it's a very, very important exam for you to do well on because schools basically look at it as a measure to compare applicants you know so it's really really important to do well especially on the science sections uh, the PAT is a really important section of that exam as well and so definitely take this exam seriously if you have um, a mediocre GPA if you kill the DAT you have a really good chance of get in, getting into a good dental school um, if you have a really good GPA then you know you're you have a little bit more flexibility with the DAT but at the end of the day you want to do really well well in school uh, in your undergrad uh, education you want to do really well on the DAT as well so it's definitely a combination of both of those things right. and so you know doing really well just means having the right resources and being dedicated to a study period for me I studied for the DAT for about one month it was a long study period but honestly you need a month to study for it there is just so much information um, that is covered on the DAT so you really need a long period I studied for it um, when I graduated from UC Berkeley because I took uh, a few years off and I'll talk about that in another video uh, Sarah you, you took it during school uh, mm -hmm right because you you went straight ahead yeah so I took it um, my winter break of junior year because that's you apply um, during that cycle and then you interview all of senior year so I did do it during that I think like four and a half to five weeks um, of a break that we had I studied for that full month and then I took it at the end of that and we're talking about like eight hours a day for more. a full month I mean yeah maybe even more from eight to ten hours a day it's a very taunting exam you guys it's a lot of information it's basically like two years of undergrad. I mean, it covers things from OCHEM to physics to biochem to no physics. No physics. No physics. That's on the MCAT. Okay, that's good. No physics. That's on the MCAT because I hate physics. Um, but it does cover, you know, math. It comes, the PAT section alone is like really daunting. The PAT. Yeah. Um, that's so different than the MCAT. That's very different than the MCAT. Um, and so, you know, the DAT is a very, very tough exam that you have to spend a lot of time studying for. Um, but with the right resources, I think that you could do really really well on this exam uh, you just have to really set a dedicated study period for it if you can't study eight to ten hours a day then you're gonna have to stretch your study period out to about two to three months I recommend a one month intensive study period because that makes you the most prepared for the exam since your amount of information is all compact into that one month so I definitely recommend that you have to leave time to review material do questions do practices do mock exams it's overwhelming it's a lot it's a lot it's a it's a really overwhelming overwhelming exam um, most people take it you know if they're taking a year off they take it right right after they graduate when the information is fresh you could also take it during school Sarah's also a UC Berkeley grad so we're both Cal Bears um, and so you know I took it during my year off she took it during her uh, uh, senior year in order to apply and so you could definitely do it different ways but we do have a couple of resources that we both really really love um, and our number one resource that we absolutely love that we recommend to everyone is the DAT destroyer yeah. this is tried and tested for many 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 years many cycles everybody swears by this the DAT destroyer is basically a huge book of questions right just a bunch of questions like tons and tons of questions most notably they are really well known for their OCHEM but now they have DAT destroyer for all the different subjects which is really helpful and I recommend you get all of them um, when I started out studying for it I did the uh, OCHEM section and that one is especially good I yeah. mean it is 
so 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 good I tons of questions really good explanations uh, very short short sweet and right to the point and basically the more questions you do through the DAT destroyer the better that you will be on the DAT itself and so um, you use that resource through and through yeah. as well right I use um, the version that had all of the different topics on it and I loved it especially for the biology I know that bio is just so random and all over the place that I took the information that I got from the DAT destroyer for the bio section and put it on a word document that I would kind of read at night or whenever I had the chance to like notes like you review it was like notes. it was basically notes because the especially for the bio section it was so random I mean it's such a high yield uh, book the DAT destroyer yeah. so it was really 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 a good resource um, what I really loved about it is that because it's so many different questions you actually can incorporate it into your study period so that you can go through it twice um, I would go through it three times even if you can because it just exposes you to so many different questions on so many different high yield topics you want to make sure you've met mastered these topics before you go in to take the DAT. So the DAT Destroyer is definitely the number one resource. We absolutely love it. I, everybody that's used it loves it. Loves yeah, it. Um, and so that should be your number one resource. But um, to use it after you've already reviewed content, not kind of right in the beginning because of course. you want to test your knowledge. Yes. And so basically how I used it is I would review the content, um, you know, one day and then the next day would do the DAT Destroyer and kind of did it like that. And so DAT Destroyer really just reinforces everything that you've learned and gives you so many different questions and then explains things to you and so it's a, it's a really wonderful resource um, the other resource that we absolutely loved and we both used together is Chad's videos Chad's videos is actually a really good resource to use um, basically I use them I, I use them at the same time simultaneously with the DAT destroyer so I would do like a topic in Chad's videos and then would do the DAT destroyer for that uh, I personally find that really helpful to go through all of the material and then reinforce it with questions and so Chad's videos is like is it's like a, like a uh, I would say like it's a comprehensive review comprehensive, yeah. of all of the material, but it's it's not as detailed as maybe yeah. the actual exam. So I would use it as your first step, as like an overall. Um, review of all of the different um, pre-dental courses and then I would supplement with other resources in order to really uh, get you those details. Chad vid Chad's videos alone are not enough. Definitely not enough but I would recommend taking really good notes when you're watching the videos because I believe it's a, it's a subscription period so you only have access to the videos for so long right. so make sure you take as much notes as you want. I know I would always pause it kind of write down especially for the chemistry I'd write down the different reactions that he talked about and they were great I reference those I still have them somewhere right. I reference them throughout throughout my entire study and period. he's just a really good teacher he's like a really great teacher he's yeah. just not overwhelming when you're watching and he's not really boring like yeah. he, it's, he's just a, such a great teacher and so I really like Chad's videos um, I thought they were really easy to follow really helpful not so overwhelming so you don't feel like you're you know at the end of the day like just so frustrated with all of the amount of information he really breaks it down to you and I think it's a really good initial resource to use and so that's another resource uh, the other resource that I really loved is um, the crack uh, DAT uh, the crack DAT uh now they have like all of these different topics, but when I use this resource, it was an online uh, specifically for the PAT. The PAT, I personally struggled with a lot. It's a very hard section for a lot of people. Dental schools look at this section really with like a fine eye because they, because this is a section that kind of tells them whether or not you're good with, um, you know, 3D spatial configurations. I don't even know what they really like. It's for spatial, rec yeah. Yeah, it's just like, it's supposed to t tell them that you you are going to be really good at interpreting like data like for example um, radiographs of teeth and making sure that you know what that would look like in a 3d version and so anyway it's a really complicated section of the exam if you haven't looked at it yet you're gonna be like whoa what is this I mean the PAT is just really really weird and so you really need a good resource in order for you to just do a ton of practice questions and try to get through as many as you can there's like weird like hole punching sections and like yeah. line games, sections kind of. they're, they're literally games I mean I mean, maybe like their mind games I don't know some of the sections were really crazy but 
um, crack that pat was really really good um, I loved it it was a really good uh, test and it actually improved my score I mean I was like really struggling I was getting like 17 like 18 and then it brought my score up in like in the mid 20s and so crack that pat was like really really good and dental schools really care about your science scores and they really care about that pat so um, definitely use that resource and I think they do have all the different subjects now and so you can try them out and see if you like them but it is a subscription and it's an online uh, program that you can get on your computer in order to simulate the PAT and take it as like a practice and so it's 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 pretty good yeah um, the other resource uh, that we want to talk about really quickly is the Kaplan DAT review. I use this book as a resource to kind of reference back and forth if I needed to like read up on a specific topic, open it up, look through it. Um, I didn't use it so much for biology because for biology I used um, Biology for Dummies. Um, it was it was like the AP Biology book for Dummies, and that I found was really really helpful for the biology section specifically. So the Kaplan book was mostly for like chemistry and other topics that I wanted to brush up on, but um, you used it a little bit as well right I did I did like it for the bio section I used it for the bio section I didn't use the bio for dummies but I also liked it for I think they had like a two or a two to four um, practice exams in the back I like doing those in the beginning but I don't advise to do paper exams because the real thing is on a computer so you kind of want to get in that mindset of being able to take an exam on a computer and not being able to um, you know mark up the papers and so. deal with like the eye strain of looking at a computer yeah. screen all day long it's a lot so it is a lot um, but you didn't really love the uh, the Kaplan you could have done without it right I I think I could have done without the Kaplan per se but I would have wanted some sort of Textbook, reference book. yeah right so you know Kaplan would be one resource you could try it's because it's a resource that we both tried at the time um, if there is another resource that somebody likes that like an actual textbook you could try that as well because it wasn't like our absolute favorite it's a little bit dry it's yeah. a dry book it's really big it's not like there aren't any like mnemonics or pictures or anything like that so it's, a, it's a, like it's a like when you sit down with the book you're like oh my god I have to it's so daunting and so you know it's not our favorite resource but we definitely put it on there because it's a it's a good reference book to go back to if you need to and so it's there um, and then you want to talk about the DAT boot camp I didn't do that that wasn't around when I was taking the exam but <laughs> so I love DAT boot camp it was one of the last resources that I used it was just five I believe I think you could get a different version but what I got was the five full-length practice exams Time is a huge thing with the DAT. I know that time was my biggest stressor, kind of my biggest weakness, um, and for a lot of people as well, because it was just so pressing. Um, but the DAT boot camp, what was nice about it is it timed you and it forced you to stop. So I like that I didn't give myself, you know, a few more minutes or anything to finish up a section. It forced me to stop. And it had 10 PAT sections. I held off on the PAT because I was like, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a game. Like, it's not going to be that serious. Nope. Yeah, no. Take it, it seriously. It's it a game, but hard. it's a serious game. I delayed my DAT by a few days because I had underestimated the PAT section. Um, but DAT boot camp really helped me with the PAT because it gave me 10, um, so five more practice tests than just like the regular full length practice tests. So I was able to really, um, bring my score up higher and it gives you a score like a what they think that your score would be so that was nice because I kind of had a, an understanding of what I was what range I was scoring in besides like saying oh I'm at 70% well what does this mean on the scale of 1 to 30 because that's how the DAT is graded I, I believe it's still graded the same way I'm not 100% mm -hmm. sure but um, I really recommend DAT boot camp I recommend doing the um, the most tests you can do if you have that time I love doing it I did I know like a full length test every single day sometimes two and even if I, I didn't personally do the uh, the DAT boot camp I do recommend that you guys get a question a Q bank resource other than the DAT destroyer because the DAT destroyer um, you know is really wonderful and great but you do need a computer program that can kind of yeah. give you a mock simulation of the exam because this exam is a true test of your stamina it's a true test of your test taking abilities your time management it's really a true test of your ability to get through so many questions in a finite amount of time and so you definitely want to get a Q bank uh, 
whatever it is that you choose. At the end of the day, you guys, this is a really, really difficult exam. It's really long. It's a high stakes exam. It's 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 really just a daunting task, but you can get through it with the right resources, the right support system. Make sure you're supporting yourself, keeping healthy, going to the gym or doing yoga, whatever it is for self care, um, making sure you're eating well and you're talking to a lot of other people and you know keeping yourself grounded and supported will definitely get you through this exam. And then once it's done, you can apply to dental schools and you're well on your way into a really pretty awesome career, I think. It's a great career. <laughs> great career choice. And so, you know, don't let this exam be an obstacle. Let it be just a challenge that you are going to overcome and do. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot, you guys. But definitely talk to a lot of people, see all the different things that they used. What we tell you today is not sponsored or paid or anything like that. It's just our personal experience, what we have done personally, um, and what we did in order to do well on the exam, apply to dental schools, and get our career started. And so um, that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, by the way, just before the video ends, uh, we're going to a party in like a couple minutes. So that's why we look so dolled up. That's not our usual everyday look, but Definitely we did <laughs> want to record this video for you guys because Sarah's going back to UCSF tonight because she has patients tomorrow. And so um, we just wanted to get this content out to you guys because you know I don't come to California very often. But if you like this video, please make sure you like it, subscribe to my channel. channel. Uh, make sure that you leave comments below, ask away any questions questions and if you want to follow my journey as an oral maxillofacial surgery resident please make sure you follow me on instagram at 15 blades i also have a blog www.15blades.com thank you so much for tuning in you guys and we will see you next time